I call the meeting to order of the local ZBA. Um, first thing we have to do is review our minutes, and we have four papers to look at. So the first one we have is June 13th, 2019. Uh, anyone want to open this? No, which hearing was that? This was um, Charles Beto. That's the one in Deerfield? That's the one in Deerfield. Okay. Is that the same one that they're filing for an audit yes, petition on? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I move that we accept those minutes as as printed and note that at the top it has the link to the full meeting on YouTube if people would like a more detailed picture of the meeting. Do I have a second? So moved. Second. second. Okay. We're going to take a vote to see if we're going to accept uh, me, uh, the mi minutes from June 13th, 2019 from James Beto. Show of hands. In favor. In favor. In favor, in favor. yes. Okay, accepted. We uh, move to accept the minutes from June 13, 2019. The next one we're looking at is February 13, 2020. This is uh, minutes from the telecom, uh, I guess it was appeal, wasn't it? And it needed a permit. 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 Mm -hmm. permit. Approval for permit. Change the tower around. Right. Tower is listed here with a group. Um, yeah, I move that we accept this. Do I have a second from somebody? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, I'm ask, asking for a vote here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Uh, uh, since we're both alternates, are we both voting? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, both of you alternates are voting. All right. Then, then I vote aye on both yes. of those votes. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's passed. So we accept the minutes from uh, February 13th, 2020 on the Pocumptic tele Telecommunications site. Again, same thing listed on the the link for the entire link. meeting. Link. You gotta make sure they download that stuff so eventually it doesn't get taken down. It's so very helpful. But they actually should make a disk and put it in with the actual minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we're looking at also February 20th. 2020 for DG LLC, which is a, a continuance uh, to March 19th. Will we accept the minutes? Do I have a second? I second. I have a second. Um, let's take a vote. All in favor? Yep. Accepted. Accepting the minutes, minutes from February 20th, 2020 for the DG LLC. The last one is the minutes from January 23rd, 2020. This is from also the Dollar General LLC. So moved. Second. Second. Do we have a s vote here? I will. Vote. Yes. Aye. Okay. We vote to accept this again for C YouTube. Yep. Yeah, because we're not stenographers. Okay. Thank you, FK. That takes care of that. Um, I am going to recuse myself from this meeting because of personal conflicts. I am going to pro tem appoint uh, Kathy Felton to take my place in the meeting. Uh, she's in full charge. I know she'll do a good job. Probably do a better job than I did. I know that for a fact. Should okay. I just stay here? No, move up here, please, okay. up the chair. 
Bring that folder so you have it because you're going to need it. Okay. You did a nice job. Thank you. I'm reading oh, Robert's rules. I'm starting to get the tang of this. Did that go in one of them? Yes. Do you know which one? Or on top? That was on top. We're all voting. Right. Right. So they know. Yes, we're all voting. Okay. Yeah, I think you need to uh, advise the petitioner that there's only four of us available to vote. And if they want to, do they want to wait for another alternate night or okay. do they want to go forward because it takes four votes? I'll open the hearing and then we'll. Yeah. We'll, we'll cut that one up. Okay. All right. So as I understand it, I think the first thing I need to do is read uh, the notice that was printed out. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. Thursday, March 12, 2020 in the main meeting room of the town offices on the application of Daniel Talega for a special permit to use an accessory apartment at their home located at 127 North Main Street. So we are now officially opening this hearing. And um, I don't know if you could hear what Bob was saying, but uh, there are four of us tonight voting. And so in order for it to move forward, all four of us would have to vote in favor. Okay. So after we have all of our discussion, you will have a, a chance to decide whether you'd like us to proceed with voting or if you want to withdraw it without prejudice, which would allow you to come back later with other information. But we'll get, we'll get to that later. Should also okay. vote okay. or, and more voters. And more voters. Thank you. Good point. You, uh, Good morning. You need to uh, caution them that if the board turns them down, uh, it's very difficult to file again within a two-year period. Okay. okay. And we can go over that again towards oh, the end yeah. of the hearing before. Just so you know. Okay. So let me just find one is there, thing. Is there any more alternates or just the two? There are two the alternates two. in there here. They're both here, yeah. But I think that there are. We have two other members who, who could be here, who, mm -hmm. um, um, in addition to Bernie, who has recused himself. So we have two other members who aren't here tonight who could be here in the future. Okay. So the way this is going to go is uh, first we're going to have the applicant re requesting the special permit uh, come forward, state your name clearly, and uh, go through you know any relevant information about your application. Um, and then any public attendees with comments and support of the request come forward next. And then any public attendees with comments opposed or having concerns regarding the request come forward. Um, and kind of throughout, it seems to be the case that the board asks questions mm -hmm. and um, we have some discussion and, and look at information. Um, and then at a certain point, uh, we close the hearing to the public and the board just discusses it. And then before we vote, that's when we'll talk to you about whether we're moving forward with a vote or not, whether you want to move forward with the vote. Okay. Now All right. I have somebody to speak on my behalf that that Yeah, so that this is the perfect time to go ahead and uh, the, you can, whomever wants to come up and talk about the application. Full name, Daniel Talega. I live at 127 North Main Street. special permit because we had a phone call and a visit subsequently with him to the building inspector. We have an apartment in a building that is located on our property that we put in, one that we believe, based on what we had seen when we were online, was okay to do because it was already in the books as being a building that could have a living unit in it. Um, and that's actually in the property cards for Deerfield. And I do have printouts of stuff if anybody would like to see it. 
Um, so we will definitely want to look over things, but you can continue. Talk first, yeah. okay. okay. So we had put in an apartment for my son and his girlfriend. At the time, my son got laid off, um, and it kind of came and evolved through time. Um, it, we weren't using it prior to that as an apartment. It was kind of more of a space where the kids hung out and just different things. Um, and then he needed, they needed a place to go. He lost his job. They came, and it kind of evolved, and we grew it into an apartment. What is there is what was there previously. We haven't changed the integrity of the structure. So there was already, there was a half bath. We did increase that to a full bath. There was a sink already there. We still have a sink there. We just moved the sink into a easier location to get to. The structure of the place that was inside is still the same on the inside. There was a large living space. There was two small room, one medium room, one small room off of it. Those pieces are all still there. We haven't gone and changed any of that. It's just that they are now living in there. Um, as I mentioned, we did look because he is a tradesman here in town. So we wanted, okay, n knowing what little we know about things, you look online and is things allowed. So when we did, and we looked at how is our property and what are we zoned as with us this center village residential mm -hmm. district they call us um, it was listed that our property is listed with the town as having it's an apartment place with four to eight units is how it's listed with the town and then the card specifically that holds the property in the back because it's one property which he purchased but it has two separate addresses, the main home and then the building in the back. Mm -hmm. One's 125, one's 127. The building that's 125, which is the one that's in question, actually has in the card that it has a living space in it. So that living space is what we used. And it also has in the card that it has the half bath and it has in the card that it had the other fixture, which is the kitchen sink. So we didn't think that we needed to go and obtain any other type of special permitting or permissions, which is why we moved forward with what we did with them living in this space. When we got a phone call from the building inspector, I then let Dan know. He went down, he came down here, he met with him, he talked with him. He said he needed to look into things because he wasn't quite sure because he also thought perhaps it was okay, but he wanted to dig deeper and then he said what he found, he thought that he needed to send the letter and that we needed to come here. So he then directed us to do this, to follow through and do an appeal and look for an accessory apartment because he wasn't quite sure the interpretation of all of it, mm -hmm. which is what's led us here. We in no way want to bypass any systems if we need to have other inspections. We are more than willing to do that. It was an honest mistake on our part if that's the case. It wasn't meant in any way to bypass anything. We just thought with what we knew that this was okay. Um, and we have looked into things. I've looked into a lot of things. I'm just going to tell you that. Um, once we got that letter and we start <laughs> worrying about things, I am a mother and I'm not going to deny that. That is my son. It's where you're going to go and now it's worse with coronavirus. Um, you know, where are you going to send them? And one of the things that I did look into is that the, the, the Deerfield Planning Board did a whole housing study and it talks in here at length and it was actually put into place by our select board in 2013 that talks about adding additional housing mm -hmm. and using the Deerfield Village District, you know, the center district to turn around and use existing structures and to be able to have people have more than one unit in places or more than two units in places and things along those lines. And that's all in here and our unit, we believe completely falls within everything that they were looking for this town to be able to have for housing so that we don't have people on the streets and so that we can continue to have citizens come to our town that are young because we are, and I'm going to point to us, we are the people that are starting to age a bit, and I'm just going to use that loosely, where we want the younger population and we have that. We have that with who's behind us and I believe that wholeheartedly. We have people who, you know, want to get married and buy in town and raise in town and to turn around and take that away at this point I think would be a travesty, um, in my opinion. And I have all of this wonderful stuff that I printed up to talk about it. Um, some things, and I do know that um, we have letters here from our butters. Some of our butters have wrote letters, um, as well as we have a butter who is here with us. So I do have the letters for those that are in favor of it, um, and they have no objections. We have a lot of activity at our house, and I'll be straightforward with you about that. Living in our main home, we have five kids who when we moved in together and this took place all started becoming driving age. 
um, and I don't know here who has children, uh, but when they start driving and their friends start coming around, our home is a constant buzz burn. Mm -hmm. But when the majority of our butters don't have any issues and concerns with that, I think that's a positive thing. Um, I don't know what else to add about anything else. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't have anything to add. I'm thinking if, if, if somebody in, wants to come and speak in favor, should we do that? And then, then and at then some I point have we'll have you come forward with all the information, but maybe yeah. we'll let, hear from yeah. your... If you don't mind stating your address and your name, please. I'm Judith Rathbone. I'm the daughter of Charles Mark from 131 North Main Street, and I've been living with father since January 18th um, of this year due to his ill health. And um, he wrote a letter, he was happy to write a letter, of course he dictated it to me and I put it together, he signed it. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little historical background because my parents bought that house when I was 18 and that was in 1973. And um, um, I don't know who was living there at the time, it wasn't you guys, no. it was someone else, but the barn was there and dad admired it and he thought it was a very um, a clever idea that you could have a building behind the main house that could be made um, into apartments and we knew there were apartments in there, we assumed that. And he, you know, the, the Jewett house, which is the house that he owns, you know, didn't lend itself to that kind of setup. It wasn't a farmhouse, it was the house built in the early 1900s for um, an attorney and um, yet that's what he longed for because he insisted when I got married um, at the age of 21, he insisted that I buy a house on North Silver Lane in Sunderland. That was the closest we could get that was affordable. So the same ideas that Patty and Dan are talking about of wanting to keep your family close was you know, absolutely true. And um, we just looked for the most affordable one we could have. So we all, our family always knew that there was apartment apartments there and totally supported it, never had any trouble, never had any problem, including up until the present time. And if there has ever been any noise, it's been joyous. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Is there anybody else who would like to come up to speak? What about anybody who might have concerns or be in opposition? Okay. My name is Donna Gripko, and I live at 588 Greenfield Road. Um, I have owned 123 North Main Street. It has been in the Gripko family since 1968. My dad bought it in 1968. I was only nine years old then. So we used to call it Parsons because of the family that subdivided this property. It was owned by one family in 1968. So the problems are about maybe 10 years ago, um, Mr. Telega uh, was putting a dance studio in this building. Pamphlets were being handed out. They were gonna use Frontier Regional as their parking lot. I, as a, because I've gone through the zoning peer, um, process to have my business where it is, there was no notice. There were nothing put in the mail for a meeting. But the building inspector, Mr. Kalaszewski, nipped it in the bud because it wasn't being done by the bylaw standards. So now this um, apartment has been put in already without the due process of the bylaws of the town of Deerfield. So to reward them for, oh, we thought, we read, we, we, we know it's a, in, in all these years from 1968, no one's lived in that building. It was a Deerfield Electric, um, and it was another electrician before that. And like you say, it has a half bath. And the other, in my deed that you see, if you read it, it the, the sewer line from the building that they have the apartment in connects through the four family house to the street. So I have concerns over long term that that would necessarily create problems at some point. It is in the deed that they have to pay to fix any problems. But getting that to happen 
can be a whole can of worms. And then they were so forthright about that they have a busy yard and household. The deed of this land gives the 123 Main 10 feet north, which allows for two parking spaces. We also have a certain segment of driveway from, from Main Street all the way up. And I have a, I have a couple of pictures here of the, of the blocking of the right of way. There's a 10 foot right of way that goes with the deed. In the past five years maybe, a lot of conflict over our access to go around the back of the building, access to two parking spaces, go through the shared driveway. I, I just think that if you add two more cars, which is also, the two cars have already been technically added to this, and I have a picture of just a simple one from December, just December, and then the snow gets plowed, blocking our access to our part that we can have. And I asked Mr. Telego one time to push the snow, blocks it. When my dad was alive, he'd go down and move it with his, with his tractor, which gave him a lot of extra things to keep himself busy and living a long, long life. But it's a short-term um, answer to the long-term problem. And that's what there is here. There's long-term problems over the respect of the property lines. When I've asked the cars to be moved, I get refused. There have been two signs put up on the north side, parking for 123 main only, doesn't matter. The friends who come over, and I've been in the run, ridden by, pulled in, asked to move the cars, I get faces pushed against the window and attitude at me. I don't know how you as a board can enforce the boundaries. That's a huge concern and a long term sewer line. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there thank you. You can, you actually both can share your data or your your information. Maybe just put it up here. Um, and then be seated and then is it Thank you. Thank you. Card for our house where it shows that it is currently listed as an apartment with four to eight units. Okay, thank you. Uh, as highlighted on the top. That's the first This piece here is the property card that comes off of Deerfield's page. Um, if you look on here, this talks about the building in the back. And you can see where it says that it was already and has already been assessed as a building that has a living unit in it, along with the half bath and the other fixture, which is the kitchen. That's on this one here. So this is the property. It's res slash commercial back there, and that's the living unit piece of it. Okay. I have a counter, in a sense, to her talking about the parking, there has always been two cars that park at that facility because it was rented out for a long time. This is the map of our property, I think you can move your keys. You'll see we have a horseshoe driveway that's fully paved here and our parking goes along here. This along here is on our property where we still park. What is on there is a 10 foot right of way on her property to egress right of ways under Massachusetts law. Cannot be permanently blocked. That's the right way for you, but you can temporarily park here like we do. When we and when those pictures are taken, when we temporarily park, it's emptying groceries or running in the house for something. Um, but you can see when I do this across there. Can I just say something? Yeah. That's not true. I come by at five o'clock in the morning and the truck has been parked in the yard. Here is all night one long. letter. There's another letter for you. When I come to the apartment, another they letter cross for you. The truck intentionally to yes. block the other one. Do you have the other papers? Oh, I got them. Here's another letter for you. And another one.
I do have a letter. I only have one copy of this. I apologize if you can share it. This is signed by some of the tenants that are in her building regarding us and in, for, in favor of us doing this. And then, I don't know if you want to review it all the housing plan and the highlights in it, including the recommendations and the approval goals. Oh, oh no, thank you. You're good with all that? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I think it should be online. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to speak? Okay. So this is, okay. Hello, my name is Rich Pierog, Jr. I'd like to address the board. Thank you for taking the time. I'm the third party in question here. I'm currently the one resident at uh, 127. Is that current address? I always mess it up, 125, 127. Um, I believe all the above statements have been true on the part of the fact that it was, in fact, I did lose my job. I did need a place to live, and we had discussed that it had been a previous establishment, and I did not believe we were violating any bylaws, laws, or any effects. The time in question of asking whether or not any vehicles have been parked there for an extended period of time in an allotment, um, any time that any of my vehicles have personally been parked there, um, and it had been directly in front of uh, the residence, in front of our large uh, bay windows. The only time that we had been parked anywhere slightly adjacent close to that residence was in if I was loading or unloading my vehicle with anything and then promptly I would move my vehicle. Uh, I would like to estimate the longest approximate time my vehicle ever staged there was probably about an hour and a half, two hours, and that's when I was unloading, loading pellets into my home. I do have a good report with all of the residents at her establishment that she has, all of her residents and tenants. Uh, I regularly engage with the couple that live in both the upstairs and downstairs of the facility. We actually grill together pretty occasionally. Uh, I have not once heard any complaints from any tenants or any local residents in regards to what I've been doing in there. Um, nothing but positive, nothing but great things to say. I'd like to hope everything can be taken into consideration today. No, I appreciate all your time. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, we can ask, we can look at information, we can ask questions. I honestly feel like there's now been so much given to us that it, it's going to take a long time to can go you through read this. The building inspectors' comments and those other comments from the boards, you know, from the good good idea. Okay. Just so that everybody so here understand. is aware. Okay. So. Uh, for every hearing, uh, we get, I guess, the, the hearing information is passed by the select board and the planning board, typically also the fire chief, the police chief, you know, we, and anybody who has, who can make comments on it is asked to make comments on it. So I know I have two sets of comments. I don't know if I have a complete set of comments, but I will read what we have. I know that there's one from the building inspector and one from the chairman of the planning board. Okay. And there's something from the select board too, I think. That's right. I think. What's that? I think that's a police. Oh, do you think those two? Okay. So I have not read all of these, so just bear with me while I go through here slowly. I don't know if they shared them with you, then or not. We'll show up. He looked at some of them at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This one is from John Pacharek, the police chief. Um, no issues or concerns. From John Pacharek, the police chief. This one is from Robert Walden, our building commissioner. Please see attached zoning violation letters. The apartment is located in an old commercial building behind their residence. Okay, this might take a little while. I think it's important. You tell. Um, this is on January 22nd, 2020. Dear Mr. Talega, and this is from Robert Walden. So I'm assuming you've already read this, but uh, this letter is to serve as a violation notice and a summary of our conversations, both in person and by phone. Per our phone conversations, you were informed of a written complaint that I received during the month of December 2019 regarding an illegal apartment being occupied in your accessory building located at 127 North Main Street. In response, you came to the 
building department where you admitted to have an apartment and that is currently occupied. Your property is located in the CVRD district. According to the zone, Deerfield Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 179, Section 2200, this is not a permissible use. Use is not expressly provided for here in are prohibited. Subsection 2020, wait, pardon me, 2230 does allow for accessory apartments for the purpose of providing assistance with the activities of daily living. This, is, this use is only allowed by special permit. You are hereby ordered to cease and desist any further use of this apartment. I'm requesting that the apartment be vacated on or before March 1st, 2020. This time limit will allow for more than 30 days to notify your tenant, after which time I would request permission for myself, building commissioner, and zoning enforcement officer, and Richard Kalaszewski, board of health agent, to inspect the premises for compliance. At any time, you have the right to appeal this notice to the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. Second letter, uh, also from Robert Walden to Mr. Talega, February 6, 2020. After considering your request for an extension of time to vacate the illegal apartment located in your accessory building at 127 North Main Street, I am willing to grant another 30-day period to relocate or evict your tenant. This will be the only extension I will be granting. You are still ordered to cease and desist use of this apartment, and it must be vacated on or before April 1, 2020. This extension is a more than reasonable amount of time to notify your tenant and have the apartment vacated. I will now be requesting permission for myself and the Deerfield Health Inspector to access this apartment on April 1st to verify compliance to this order. At any time, you have the right to appeal this notice to the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals. And then he attaches a picture. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the request for comments from the planning board. Okay, it says the planning board is considering changes to town bylaws regarding accessory apartments. Sorry, I'm having trouble reading this. Um, to make them by right in certain locations. We don't know enough about this particular property, so we can't provide specific comments. Okay from the planning board. Uh, from the board of assessors, no comment. Do you know who this is? Yeah, it's the guy from the Conservation Commission. Okay. From the Conservation Commission, no comment. So too. So let's just take a minute here and see where that might be. I think it might be right here. Okay. Yep, here it is. Okay, this is from uh, the select board. Um, we support our local building commissioner and his, I can't read what that says. I, I read that before, if you pass it over, I can read it. Okay, and his, okay. In his actions, in actions. this manner. Actions, sorry, <laughs> I, I couldn't. School teacher. Okay, yeah. read anything. good. In his actions in this matter at this time, and the, um, yeah, would you read the rest of it, please? <laughs> it says, we support our local building commissioner and his actions in this manner at this time, and the um, resident needs to follow the process for remediation or relief. Excellent. Thank you. And then there's something written under it in somebody else's. What you're saying is a selectman voted. Oh, okay. The select board voted this response at their meeting. Okay. okay. Meaning that the select board told her what to say. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that this is their response to us. If they, they approved that she wrote that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And who wrote that? Casey Warren, hmm. our town administrator, and with the support of the select board, submitted it. So on that's the, the opinion board. of the select board. Yes. 
Great. That's how it's request for comments so checked by the select mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. Can I read that again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It says. One more time, since it's smoother. We support our local building commissioner and his actions in this manner at this time, and the resident needs to follow the process for remediation or relief. Okay. Okay. Do you all have, do you want to take time to look through some of the documents they gave us? Or do you have immediate questions you'd like to have answered? Okay. Yeah, I have questions. You have questions? You want to start with questions? But this is going to, this might take a while because I feel like they gave us some information that we'd like to respectfully like I review. I might be able to give you a little understand. background ahead of time if you want. Okay. It's up to you. Why don't you go ahead with any questions and then Bob, please sprinkle in. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, I guess just for clarity, when, when was the apartment finished and, and uh, moved into? About a year and a half ago. And it was, it was already there. I mean, it was, they moved in about a year and a half ago and it, everything was there. Um, it was just finishing the bathroom up um, and then adding two appliances to it. So you're saying they moved in as it was sort of inherited? Correct. And yeah. then it was enhanced? Then it was enhanced, correct. Mm -hmm. Was there any um, knowledge of this or concern at the time? There was no information given that was being done. Um, can I just recommend that when people are speaking, they come to the mic so everyone at home is yep. watching can also hear your response? Thank you. That's a good yep. request. Yeah, I would invite you guys to come okay. back up because yeah. we're probably going to have some questions. Yeah. Um, I'll have to tell you that as I did my research in advance, I don't think I had enough, quite enough background, because mm -hmm. I looked at it strictly as an in-law apartment. Mm -hmm. So I was looking to see, all my questions had to do with how it was functioning as an in-law apartment, because that's on the application. It says, we are seeking approval for the use of an in-law apartment. This requires a special permit and appeal of a notice. So all of my questions had to do with it be serving as an in-law apartment. Yeah, that was kind clearly of that was Not. a directive from your building inspector okay. to go with the accessory right. route but, for the appeal. But really it really doesn't sound like you're, um, okay. So, so you're really, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so it doesn't seem like uh, that's, it seems different what you're saying and what you like the special permit for and what it's being used for. So are we dealing with an application for a special permit for an in-law apartment? It, well, it says we are seeking approval for the use of an in-law apartment. It, this Incessory. requires a special permit and appeal of notice. So that, to me, that yes, was, that's what I thought we were, we that were seeking approval for. That was the direction that we received right. from Bob. It's even in the letter that you read. Right. We were under the impression that we were already okay with everything because of what we had seen prior to that. Right, which is why you didn't come in forward advance. in the beginning. Right. Special right. Permit. But I think my... One of my issues now is that it's the in-law apartment part. Well, if accessory in-law, it's issue, the right? same. I mean, it's a difference, right? That's if there's what a difference saying. in our bylaws. I mean. Oh, okay. Well, not uh, so accessory. Is that the? Well. Maybe maybe we should continue getting more facts and and yeah. understanding the situation. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. a, it, I guess it is a. I think it's maybe a technical concern that that's what the application. Well, I I think it is because if you look at. Um, in our bylaws, 2240, under 4800, 2244. Well, I, um, maybe it's not different. I, it says accessory apartments for the purpose of providing assistance with the activities of daily living. And it goes into great detail Correct. of the conditions. Yeah. And that's defined as which kind of apartment? Well, it does say accessory apartment, but. And is there something separate which discusses in law apartments? No. Not per se. No, no, not per se. But I. But if you read all the details of this, it talks about. Um, here, let me pass it to you. It's very extensive sure. on who well, can, on who can live is, in can the I, can in law apartment one? and what what the necessitates somebody living there. You can have it. Okay. If I can. Please, please, I'll find that. As I understand, in a detached one-family dwelling is 
well as I can. Um, C.E. Parsons, who was a longtime selectman in the town of Deerfield, owned that whole piece of property. Mm -hmm. He was also an electrician, okay? He sold Donna's father and mother, the four family, is that four family? Mm -hmm. In 1968, am I correct? Yes. And he gave them a 10-foot easement, reserving an easement for the sewer in the back building, okay? But he did get an easement through the common driveway, okay? Mm -hmm. And everything was fine, okay? Uh, Mr. Parsons died. His wife had the property, turned it over to her daughter, okay? At some point in time, they rented the building out back, I believe, to Faye, Faye Bardwell, okay? And Faye Bardwell ran an electrician shop out of there for years. And then Bruce St. Peter, I don't know if he rented it to start with and then bought it, and according to the deed, he owned it until like 2002. Whether he rented it after that, I surmise he may have, but I don't know. So, okay, and the zoning bylaws are very difficult and complex, and especially when it deals with existing structures. And there are some rights and what have you that deal with the state law more so than what the town bylaw specifically says, because it talks about pre-existing non-conforming uses and how to handle them. And what I think has happened here is, is it wasn't caught early enough so that Mr. Talega could have filed for the permits had he thought he needed them to get the proper permits that would probably have been allowed because it's probably, as a, as a state law basically says, it's not any more detrimental than what the permitted use was to continue as an electrician shop, mm -hmm. okay? So anyway, but then after Bruce went, sold the building, all right, it was at one time a separate parcel of property. And then it got merged back in with the house out front. I'm not sure what date that actually happened, okay? That complicates your, your problem. It exacerbates your problem, okay? Because prior to that, it was a separate parcel, okay? Now it's back merged in with the front. And I uh, personally think that, uh, one, you might have to refile as a hardship, but I'm not a lawyer. and. I, because you say you have a hardship, you have a piece, you have a building that you basically can't use mm -hmm. for, for anything. You shouldn't have done the work in it that you did in it. And you've aggravated the situation by saying, well, I can park there for 15 minutes. Well, if you get ingress and egress, that's all it is, the ingress and egress. You can't block people's ingress in, in, you know, in and out. You can't block it. And, you know, that aggravates the problem, okay? And that's why we're where you're at tonight. And, uh, but I think you're gonna have to probably, you probably should talk to an attorney as to the best course of action at this point. You don't have, I don't know if you have 150 feet of frontage, do you, or you don't know? 136. 136. And to have a two family house, you have to have 125 to have a three unit building, right? You have to have it 150, I believe, okay? Uh, which complicates it. And uh, that's a, you need a special permit from the zoning board for that. But you've got 30 feet of property between both buildings. And the way I understand it in town, we, the town bylaw doesn't permit um, separate structures like that, you know, okay? I'm not sure that uh, in some cities and towns that they allow it, but common practice in Deerfield is they don't allow two residential buildings on the same lot. They allow you to have a two family. You could have a three family if it's all connected, but you have to get a special permit for that. 
it's allowable in the, in a center village district if it's attached but I think you need 150 feet of frontage because if you go back through the bylaw I think that's what it says uh, but you can ask for a hardship and I believe you touched on the part in the early part of your your presentation tonight that you do have a hardship you have a building that you can't use mm -hmm. okay uh, but I don't know what the answers are but I I, I think you might want to talk to somebody who is an attorney that can best advise you as to your best course of action. And you also need to talk with Ms. Gripko and see if you can come to some sort of an understanding as to, you know, what have you. But, you know, I think she might have a point. Her father and mother bought the property from, from the Parsons family or the descendants, and they gave her father and mother an easement for the right of way for the sewer and what have you and they reserved the right of way for the sewer into the back building so it's complicated mm -hmm. and and I don't th I think that if the board acts on this decision tonight without proper counsel right uh, I don't think a special permit is going to give you what you need I think you may have to get a variance and the board may have to make a finding, but it's complicated, and I don't want to. We only got four people here to make a decision tonight, and if one person decides to favor of it, I mean, three, four, three people want it, and one doesn't. It's dead for two years. So, you know, I don't, I don't know the answer, and uh, you don't have enough of frontage, unless uh, the young lady that's sitting back there whose father owns property back there, wants to sell you some frontage, <laughs> you're not going to find frontage for it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, I don't think he's going to sell any of his property. <laughs> and... Uh, Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. yes. It, sure. Is it possible if we end up postponing this because of this and needing to go and get counsel to come forward with us, is there a way that we can get some relief because they don't have some place to go and, and the building inspector has an Look, April 1 deadline? I can't speak for the building inspector. Or I don't think any of us would dare speak for the building inspector nor the building commissioner because we know better, okay? And, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a dilemma. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my advice at this point is you need to talk to counsel and make and find out if if you need to break, go for a special permit and or a variance, whichever is necessary, and throw your and ask for mercy because you've got a building that's basically, uh, you know, you can't do anything with it. Whether they'd let you put an electrician shop or a contractor shop back in it, I don't know. I, the zoning thing has lapsed because it went out two years after it stopped being used for that. How do the that, property that's cards? Not, that's not true. It there, was, there was always somebody that rented that place. Oh, that's right. For, uh, yeah, I paid fees to come here. Uh, mm -hmm. Another electrician rented it for years after Bruce St. Peter left. Well, when did that stop? Uh, right right, right when, they, they when they moved in. Was it within okay. two years? Yeah, absolutely was so two I years. I, I go and I pay. I, would, I, pay mm -hmm. I would suggest you go back and talk to an attorney and go through that. Yeah because you know then you might you know it might have been legal and it might not have been abandoned at this point but I oh, think it was it, never abandoned it was never no the, the commercial use might have been abandoned it was no it was not because there was no electrician that had well it. i don't know that all right but the facts before us don't show it okay okay so my advice is so like, i, I would think just, you should withdraw the application yep. or or you withdraw it and then refile uh, absolutely with all the homework done Okay, but okay. I'd also meantime, suggest that you talk to Ms. Gripko and uh, try to work out some of your differences. Because uh, that's not term. something that we can deal with. Oh, I know that. Yeah. No, right. no I'm, yeah. we are a lot of civil. Yeah. So, anyway, that's it's a dilemma. So. Uh, uh, in terms of approval, would it be within my boundaries to ask if they got approval that we separate the sewer line? Separate what? That they would have to separate the sewer line, keep and separate the buildings, so the sewer line doesn't go through my building anymore. 
Does it actually go through your building? Yes, that's why I'm reading the deed. You can read the deed and see. I don't know, I haven't read the deed. That's the impression I've got. Well, because my guess is uh, they wouldn't have taken it all the way into that building and then run it across, okay? Uh, I would think they would have come up the driveway, likely. There's right? speakage in the, in the words that says that if something happens to the sewer line at 123 Main, yeah. the, the neighbors have to pay. If something happens at 125, the owners of 123 are not liable. Okay, I'd have to There'd read it. There'd be a lot done. more detail. I'd have to read yeah. it. Well, I understand, but that's right, why but I'm under that impression that it's going through. It's I, not like we're digging into the driveway well, and fixing I, it. I think Mr. Tlegan may know some people that could <laughs> that lay sewer pipe and that sort of thing, and you know maybe there's some sort of an accommodation you can work out to, to keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. All right, but there's also a book in town that shows where every sewer connection was in town whether they can locate it or not at this point. Uh, I know it was missing for a while, and I don't know if it's been found. Be, but they'd have it up right away. Well, I don't know if they can find it. The but I know. The town of Deerfield. All right. Mm -hmm. But you might go up to the Registry mm -hmm. Deeds and look at the original sewer maps, and it may show where the connections are mm -hmm. in there because they charge frontage to pay for the cost of the sewer lines that were installed in 1936 or 38. Okay. So you have to go up there and, and ask for the, to see the original rolled prints, and then you could probably see what it tells you about going in there, whether there was a separate line that went to 123, 125, or 127. I don't know, but, but you know, and I can't ask anybody that did know because most of them are all dead. <laughs> Even, even my father, I could ask him, he's gone. Your father was a character. So, Alex, you had a question? Yeah. Um, do you think it's a bit uh, rushed if we just automatically say, hey, just withdraw the application and come back? I think um, maybe we could continue it until next time um, and maybe hear from more the other two members and maybe um, the applicant can gather in more information if need be. Mm -hmm. um, just so they don't have to go back and go through the whole process, through the whole process all so over again. It would continue it with the same request, seeking uh, a well, special permit. Well, the problem permit. is that the application says just for the special permit. It doesn't ask for a variance. And, that's and, and why I need a variance is because you think the building was abandoned. It may have been abandoned. But, so but, if, I can, but if I can show through the but town. But you still have to, you'd still have to, you could establish that you have a pre-existing commercial use, okay, right, and that you want to modify it, all right, okay, if it's still within the period, okay. But I think most people think that that was pretty much abandoned, okay. When and you say pretty much most people, what people are you talking about? I don't well, understand. It, I it was something to the, to the record that uh, that dealt with a dance studio. Dance studio, okay. Okay. Now, how far back was that? That was a long time. That was that was way far back, but he never, it well, never even came. But was it because but, he came, he came and did his own thing? He thought he was going to put a dance studio in there, and you know, he he couldn't. So anyway, that was well, nothing my, to do my, with me. My, my concern though is that we're, your your application is for something that doesn't really exist. You know that the town laws describe an accessory apartment as within the dwelling very clearly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how the logic of the variance works, but it seems like that may be what is required because what you're applying for isn't really what you have. And so I would never grant, I mean, I, I don't know about, you know, just, yeah. you know, uh, it would be difficult for any I, zoning board to grant a special, grant a special permit, permit for something that I, is and, not And I, I agree 100%. I guess where, I, where I'm lost is when we looked it up is what it says, we gave you that piece of paper that says there was a living, and I, it, but but when you when people go like this, then I'm just a you know homeowner, and I thought it was all right. But I'm looking for guidance, and, right, I, and right, I, right. I think you're giving it to me. But what we're getting, what we pay the taxes on, is yeah. the property card, and the property card has some very clear things on it. And the property and card says that that's where I'm lost. It's set for an apartment four to eight, so the building is set for apartments four to eight. And what's eight. in there currently? The main building. The main building has two. Like so, it's a two-family house. Yeah. 
and then there's a lot of traffic. But then you also look at the back building, and it says right on the, the property card for the back building that a living unit was already there. It's yeah. Like we're paying taxes on a living unit mm -hmm. and a fixture, which is still a fixture because it's still a kitchen sink. A kitchen sink is a kitchen sink. And a half bath. What we changed was we took a half bath and made it a full bath. So that was already all there. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it's in the cards that we pay taxes on every single year. You know, and the whole accessory thing came about because of guidance, thankfully, from the building inspector, mm -hmm. and I'm not arguing in any way, but, you know, when we started, I mean, I did all kinds of work looking at accessory apartments, too, thinking that's what we had to do, you know, and it's the town of Deerfield who voted that this is the direction we want to go. We don't want accessory buildings attached to the single family home. We don't want accessory buildings limited, accessory apartments limited to just family and lifelong tenants. They want to be able to open it up to other things. That's in here. Mm -hmm. signed off on in 2013 by our select board in our town. So we're kind of... Uh, yeah, I'm confused. I'm really confused. We're, 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 we're I, stuck I just, because we went with one way and then we were told that was the wrong way and maybe, yeah. maybe our building inspector didn't totally understand what he was looking at either. Because if we looked at the property cards and we're thinking one way, maybe he looked at them and didn't totally understand either. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like apartment, a separate apartment. Right, it's, it's, it's in another building. And it's saying that this is a property that has multiple, but then the question is also that this is 127 Main Street and that's a different number, as you say. 125. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so, so it's complicated. Mm -hmm. But 125's property card shows a living unit on it. When yeah. you look at the property card that I gave to you, it mm -hmm. shows that there's one living unit. I highlighted it, I believe, in orange or pink mm -hmm. on the property card for the living unit. It's, it says one living unit on it. And it says one fi other fixture, which is your kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. And it says the half bath. And those things were all there before. Because when it was used by electricians, they used those things were there for them. That was pre-existing and it's still there. Okay, but so you, you increased the half to a full, full bath. Full, correct. Um, you, 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 I mean, does a stove count, not count as a fixture? Is that, it, you, you have a kitchen in there now, I suppose? But when you look at a regular property card, it doesn't count fixtures as in stoves and refrigerators. It counts fixtures as in like your bathrooms, your I think kitchen. hard, maybe hard lines. You know, like the okay. like water. That would yeah. be, I, I guess. guess also you you would likely have needed a permit to create a half bath to a full bath. That I don't know. Yeah. Yes. 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 Tenants, right? yes. Yes. Yeah. So did you apply for that? I did not. But you have spoken. But to the but I have spoken to the plumbing inspector. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. In in order to get it. A, uh, inspected or to, to well as as we go that far yes but now since we hit this hiccup then no it has mm -hmm. not yet mm -hmm. we were waiting to get through all this and then he was going to have them come out along with any other items that you might want us to have done yeah. so I, uh, i'm just i'm still a little confused but i you know i'm gonna i, I don't can you write down this uh statute mass general laws section 40 capital A, and then you want to go underneath the um, Roman numeral five, pre-existing non-conforming uses, Mass General Laws, sec chapter 48, section six, uh, zoning and retro, you know, it goes into um, basically different things that may be grandfathered, okay? Okay. And you need to read it in Go back through it, it. A lot of it is double speak, That's you. so you can understand it. I mean, it, it's it's confusing, but um, it talks about non-use of commercial non-conforming property for two years may require a special permit subject to the decision of the by the zoning enforcement officer. Okay, that's I understand that. That's on a non-commercial. I mean, a, a use a not non-use of a commercial non-conforming property. So that means if the electrician that was in there is gone for two years, you can't do it, okay? Uh, but if you go and you read section five and what have you, and you talk to an attorney that you're paying to get the advice from, he can probably better steer you. Now we can either, we can continue your hearing tonight to a, another date. Okay. And in between you can talk to the attorney Mm -hmm. and find out if he thinks there's any argument that he can, additional argument he can make in your behalf, okay? And 
you know, that's the best we can do. And if, and if he tells you he thinks you need to file for a variance Instead of the in addition to the, to the special permit, uh, he should tell you that, and you should. It may cost you another hundred bucks to to do the filing, uh, but you, you need to work out your situation with your neighbor uh, because any butter can file an appeal. Yes. Okay, and it can tie things up for a long time, and we don't look forward to appeals. <laughs> okay, and uh, but, but I want you to realize that. You know, it's, it's that section you go in and, and you look at it because it's a grandfathered building. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. The building was built before I was born. Oh, absolutely. And I, I'm old. I understand. <laughs> and I lived in town all my life, so I, I understand. I, I know the property. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I grew up in town. I was born and bred in South Deerfield, so I know all about it. It's the first time I've been here to do anything like this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know that it wasn't, um, when, you, when you keep saying that the two-year statue, I know it's not because uh, Town of Deerfield has a $5 fee for the electrician that's renting it right now, or was renting it, to pay, and he came in here to pay it. So I paid it uh, over in the corner there. I always used to pay it to the, would be the assessors maybe, or the? I don't know. He probably, yeah. That was probably personal property tax. No. Uh, yeah. But maybe you need not. to. You, may, you need to make sure that you pay the other five dollars before the two years is gone. <laughs> True, but I, I already I already have, so yeah. you know. No, but but you, yeah. you know what I mean to make sure that the the non-conforming use continues. Yes. So right. Okay. Right. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that we think we should continue this. Yeah. So we can continue this out. It doesn't make it a dead issue. No. We can meet with our attorney additional information that we need to gather to come back and that they will guide us and we can go from there. And uh, you know, you still got to convince four people out of whatever is sitting here because mm -hmm. tonight we have uh, two, reg three regular members that aren't present, okay? And uh, you know, I know one is uh, we under we, under we the understand country. that, so, but to go for a special permit, I have to come you have with to you because then I have to yeah. do this anyway. So yeah. you keep saying that, but I, we understand that. I mean, okay. that's why we're here. And then in, um, we can make copies of all this and share it with everybody. The other members. And if uh, okay. Ms. Kripko would like a copy of any of that stuff, she's certainly welcome to it all. Yes. Am I welcome to a copy of her stuff too, or no? Of course. If she, whatever she submitted to us, yeah, absolutely. Once once it hits the table, okay, it's where, a public where record. Is, where is the other Miss Gripko's? Yep. This the so, deed. The sign entry. No, no. Oh, no, no, I don't know. I got. Okay. Yeah, this if you need it, go I took all their stuff and just put That's, it here. Yeah. Okay. One copy has to stay with the folder okay. of yes. everything. Yeah. yeah. One of everything. You can. Yeah. So but I would suggest you talk to your attorneys and talk to Miss Gripko. And see if you can work out your all your stuff in, okay. in the record. Okay, so when we so say we're going to continue, we, if, we set if a date. they request that it be continued, okay. we'll set a date to continue it. And okay. you want to set it out uh, two or three weeks? We're, we're, no, we're pretty we meet every Tuesday, yes. Thursday, whatever we the meet. Second, third, the second we, we kind of were yeah, second very Thursday, six thirty. Last year we met in June and then we met in January. But we made we, a. But a, we're making a, a goal. We just of proved keeping the it minutes. Of, we made a decision that yep. we're going to meet monthly. Yep. So it, schedule it whatever date you want. And so we said the second. Help remind me the second Thursday at six thirty. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, if we think about our agenda for the second Thursday in April, do we think we have time for an additional? Well, let's look at the date. Mm -hmm. We'd like we'd like to put it off till we would make it a little you, bit more time. Well, I think you. The other issue is that they need to make this, this, uh, Yeah. But building I don't know that we have any. No, I know, but with the building inspector. so we can't say. Can we can't we say anything. We can't. Him. Can we ask him for him to continue it? I mean, would there be? Yeah, any, we can't just. Put you the, could let him know that we've continued the hearing and okay. why. He yep. could watch it, and you could say, given those, given that. This is in process and what's happening. You can ask him. Okay. Yeah, I, just, I, I will stop to see him tomorrow. Okay. I just think Absolutely. It's not, I don't think it's right that we just say, oh, 
too bad, you know. But yeah. you kick you out. I just don't think that's. I don't think that's. I don't think that we're trying to say too bad. No, <laughs> no. I, but that's. Like Kathy, that's yeah. just Kathy, what I was. If they have to file they have the to variance, vacate. You know, they're I don't, going to need more time than just the first uh, second second Thursday of April. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think uh, the the first one is on a second, so it's going to be, be in if the your ninth. lawyer advises you to apply for a variance in addition to or instead of the special permit. Yep. That would give you more time if we did it the second Thursday of May. Is what? Okay. Bob's saying, right? Yeah. So what's the date of the second Thursday? Of May? Unless we decide to meet on another Thursday. And night. I don't think we should. I think we should try really hard not to. Yeah, I think. Like, All right. Yeah, if we need to, I think one is enough, but. Yeah, if we, I guess if we need to, because we're already doing two, and it seems like Adam was fairly adamant about yeah, sticking to the schedule. And I'm okay with that. Sorry, um, right. Yeah, and I'm okay with so that. So, you've so been done it. They requested uh, a continuous of the hearing tonight to a date that we're going to set. Do I have it down? <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. So, so, yeah, do you want to do... Do you want to set the date? Yep. Go ahead and set it. Yes, we should so I, I can so we get things in order. So the Well when they say a date then we'll uh, yeah. We'll have to change our trip because we're not here. Well they'll have to we'll probably have to go around now. Yeah. They're gonna set a date maybe and see if that works. Mm, April. I don't know what the, the date is. No, we're saying April, we're or? saying in May because it'll give them more time if Second they're lawyers. Thursday in May. Yeah. Oh okay, I see. So that would be the fourteenth. Is that how, about the, how about the third Thursday in May? Oh, I think they have set meeting days. Oh, do you do? Well, we have several members who have certain days off that okay. they take off in advance so they can be here. And so. That would be May the 14th, the second one. We're, at, we're, the, we're, we're, we're out, out of town. town. We're out of town, that's why. <laughs> so could we move it to June? We could do that without any issues. Do you th yeah. Do you think going sooner is not enough time or? Well, if I don't know how, how long that's just my he's going to need. We're going to have to contact one to, uh, probably tomorrow right. and, and, you know, try to figure out what we got to do. And that'd sounds be, like to me, so Mr. That'd Jack be June me. 11th. If that's. But if we, if we just took their request under advisement and set the date um, after we see what our schedule is and what they want, okay? And maybe you could fit it in on the uh, other date in uh, April. Well, if you don't if, need, if, if, it, not if they don't to need to go for, for the variance, variance then yeah. we could put it into the April. So if we start with the April and say we need the variance, yeah. can we then come to you and change? Then let's go mm -hmm. with that route yeah. if that works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. if we we go to the we contact the lawyer and we tell him that we he t he advises us we don't need a variance. Who do we tell that we don't need a variance to? to well, you'll to be, be on the agenda you'll be already. You'll be on the agenda. Next. We come back. You're going to come back. And our lawyer will give us language. Oh, okay. And other right. things to talk about and potentially okay. come with us to come forward to the board so that we get. Them. And if if I understand it correctly, you know, if you have additional data that you'd like us to see, we can, can bring in advance so that yes. you can review it in advance. Yeah, and that would be fantastic. Yep, okay. absolutely. Okay. Do that. So we'll, we're saying second Thursday in April, we'll put yes. you on the agenda unless we hear otherwise. Yes. And then we'll do it into June, the second week of June. Yep. So we got both dates then? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Which would necessitate all the paperwork again if you needed to apply with four variants. Yes. Okay. They would give time for all that to get done because yeah. I got to yeah. put it in okay. the paper and everything. Okay. Anything else related to this hearing? Well, that we're going to we're going to we're going to postpone Continue. this hearing until April. Was it April 11th? They said. Ninth. The ninth. April 9th? Yeah. I can't remember. I'm old. April 9th. Second April Thursday, 9th. April 9th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we need to vote on that? We don't vote yes. on that. Yes. 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 Okay. I make a motion. We continue this to April 9th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for your information, your information and your patience. And
You, what Moving do you need forward. for information that you want? Excuse me? What information do you want for, that was on a table? I don't know what I'm entitled to. And You're entitled to uh, any yeah, piece of paper that, actually, that made the, the table. From the do, you people, know, the do, you, do you know what might be, there are two things that would be uh, probably the best way to get it. One is we're going to be giving this to um, our so, building commissioner assistant, so she'll have a file. And so you could look through that to see what you want to make copies of. Oh. The other thing is uh, probably sometime next week, this entire meeting will be online and you could watch it. Again and again and again. We knew we were going to be on, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I know you're going to go home and you're going to find out all about the meeting. Well, I know where I have to ride to, to hear about the okay. meeting. <laughs> you're just going to go out there and you're going to go about 300 feet. You're going to take a right and you're going to go down the street. And okay, tell thank, you you. Everything. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you. All right, so let's go through any correspondence. As far as I know, we don't have any. Correct? I don't know. Okay. Well, there's right. folders so, here. I don't know what's in it. Bernie didn't tell me of any There's yeah, another folder here. No. Let's see what it is. This one here says continuation forms. Okay. All right. Okay. And ZBA mail. Oops, let me look through the mail. Here, I'm going to let you fill this all out. Oh, there is a. For some reason, we have a Town of Deerfield in the month report for February 2020, which shows the summary of expenditures with pending totals for the ZBA. So I will pass this around and then we'll enter this into the record. Sure. Seems like the official thing to do. Yeah, we've got a lot of money we can spend. All right. Okay, sure. Okay. Wonderful. You want to take a look at this? I looked at it. Already. Okay. Thank you. Yes, of course. So we spent two hundred eleven dollars. We have seven eighty nine left. I guess. Fantastic. When do I get paid? <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. You don't, you don't even, you don't even get don't, expenses most of the time. I actually don't. Yeah, I don't know what the two hundred eleven was. I'm going to pay for my gas. <laughs> you could always take your book. Okay. So actually, I, I will put this in here then, right? Then it becomes part of the file for this. Uh, sure, sure. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. If we need to take it out for some reason. Or okay, and any other business? Not that I can think of. Will we adjourn? I second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Well done, Kathy.